Hello there, this is Harry Du. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick demo of how to create and modify a supercube. Supercube is also known as multi-table uh, data import cube. Uh, you import the data from uh, other source and uh, the data will be kept in the cube uh, for in-memory analysis. If you want to know more about MacFresh's in-memory in analytics, you can look up the documentation and also find the difference between OLAP cube and supercube. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm going to prepare the session. I'm going to use uh, Mac Red, uh, my environment to connect. So I'm going to create a, a connection object. Next, I'm going to use this method uh, to list all the available cube in my project. So this method is imported from this module. And let's see. So it will show me all the cube I have. So next, I'm going to sh I'm going to create a new cube which doesn't exist here. So the new cube name is Harry's Store Anal Analysis. And the, in order to create a new cube, you can use the constructor, passing the connection object and also passing the name of the cube. It will create a new cube object. Uh, Right now, we haven't made any request to the server yet. It just create a cube object on the Python layer. So in order to create a queue, you need to add tables into the queue, then call create method. So I'm going to prepare some data. So I'm going to use uh, uh, create a store. So store table. In the store table, I have a store ID and location. Um, I'll also prepare a sales table. In the sales table, I have a store ID category and the sales type. And I'm going to use the cells for uh, as a metric and the rest will be attributes. Uh, I'll have a, another uh, table in for uh, showing you a different update policy. Okay, so let's create a, a, a let's create a super queue. So first I'm going to add a sales table. Okay, the sales table is here. The sales table for those into my cube. So I'm going to use store ID and a category as attribute and the metrics, uh, the cells as a metrics in the cube. So when you create a new, um, when you create a new table in the cube, use the update policy replace. Okay. All right, so let's run this. Um, next, I'm going to add another table. It's a stores table. In the stores table, I have a uh, four rows of data, and and I'm going to use star ID and location as the attribute. Okay, so let's run this. Uh, you can see a preview of the data, and I'm going to call create. So when you create a, a cube, you can call a create method on the on the cube class. So I'm going to call create. So it will pass in the data to the server and create a queue. Once it's successful, you'll have the ID. So I'm going to use this ID later. So next, I'm going to show you on the workstation side. Okay, I'm going to refresh. You'll see a new cube is created called Harry's Store Analysis. I'm going to edit this data set. You see the, um, we have two tables, sales and store, right? Sales table has uh, four rows of data and uh, stores has uh, four rows of data. Okay, so it's the uh, same as the we see in the data frame. Um, next, I'm going to show you a different update policy. So first I'm going to show you replace. If you do, if you use replace, it will replace the whole table with new data. So here, if I, want to replace the sales table with the, uh, the data frame number two. And here, if I'm going to replace this with this data frame and after replace, after update, it will have only one or uh, two rows of data in the sales table. So let's try. So I'll call update to update the table and it will make a request to the server and update the data and let's check. All right, so sales will have two rows of data, right? This is the same as the data I see in the here, right? In the data frame. All right, next I'm going to show you 
um, update policy add. So when you add a table into, when you add those into a table, all the existing those data will not be changed and only the new rows will be added. So we are, uh, we, I'm going to add this to this, right? So right now we have a, uh, the sales table has two rows of data. Now I'm going to add this on top of this. So when you add this, the existing row, one TV will not be changed, it will be three, uh, 300, still 300. And then this three row will be added. So at the end, you'll have five rows of data. So let's try. I'm going to call, we're going to add this. And this is the data we're going to add and call the update. So after update, let's check the data. All right, so sales data will have a, has a three, right? Five rows of data. The sales table has a five rows of data. And the one TV is 300, okay? Next, I'm going to show you update, update policy. So the, if the update, if the policy is update, it will change the value. Um, it will not insert new rows. It will change the existing row value based on the new table. So let's, um, let's replace the data with the first data set. Okay, so let me, let me uh, replace the sales table with the, uh, the first data set. Okay, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to replace, uh, replace this. Okay, I'm going to update, call update. Now let's check the uh, data. Okay, I have four rows of data, right? From the first table. Okay, four rows of uh, sales data from the first table. So now I'm going to use update policy. Update policy, use the second sales table. Okay, second sales data frame to update. So I'm going to call update. So after update, you should still have a four rows of data. And, and the one TV will be 300 because the new data right, has a 300. The new data mm, table has a TV 300, right? Okay, so let's, let's check. So I just called update. Okay, so let's check. Okay, right, one TV becomes 300 and still four rows of data, right? Okay, next I'm going to show you offset. If I'm doing the same thing with offset, with offset, uh, you should see five rows of data, right? The new row will be inserted and this will be updated. So let's try. So I'm going to reset the table to be, uh, using the first sales table. Okay, I'm going to uh, replace the sales table with the first one, and I'm going to call update. Okay, I'm going to update, and let's check the table first. So at the beginning, I'll have four rows of data for the sales, right? Four rows of data, and the TV1, TV1 will be one. Uh, I'm going to use upsert. Okay, offset uh, to add a data frame number two. So data frame number two is like this. Oh, it's like, uh, no, it's like this, right? This is number two. So the store ID one and TV will be updated to 300 and the new row will be inserted. Okay, so let's run. Uh, I'm going to call add table with update policy offset and I'm going to call update. And I'm going to check the table. Okay, should have a five rows of data. Uh, okay, now, okay, I have a five rows of data, right? The TV one is updated to 300. So that's correct. All right. All right, 
So that's a quick demo of different update policies. And next, I'm going to show you how to fetch the queue. So once you have a queue, right, you have an ID. So I just copied ID, I think. Right? So this is a new ID I, I created, right? If you want to look up for the queue, you can use this constructor, uh, passing the ID. And if you want to look up the documentation, you can see the documentation of the constructor. Constructor, it takes ID. Uh, yeah, and also there's other parameters you can use. Okay, so how do we get a, a data out of the queue? So to get a data out of the queue, you need to call queue.toDataFrame method. Don't use the queue.DataFrame property. So that only read the, um, the data frame uh, after you download data frame from the queue. So you need to you call to data frame to download the data frame from queue uh, from server. So when you call this, you can pass this optional parameter. If this is a multi data frame is true, uh, it will create a uh, one data frame for each table in your queue. If you if you don't use this, or if you say this is a false, it will create a only um, like one data frame with the join of all the tables. So let's first create a multiple data frame first. Okay, I'm going to call this with multi data frame to true. Running this, uh, we can check the size of the data frame. I'm going to uh, check the length of the data frame. Okay, it should be two, right? I have two data frames. So first data frame is the uh, stores. Actually, yeah, stores table, uh, there's this duplicate. Okay, so it looks like there's a bug here. Okay, now let's check the, uh, let's check the data frame number number two. Okay, second data frame. It has a uh, five rows of data. So this looks like correct. Okay, five rows of data, right? This looks correct. Okay, uh, if you want to, if you don't pass this parameter, it will create a one data frame with the join data. Okay, let's run this. Uh, it shows up the data, right? You can see uh, the two table is joined together, all right? Mm, there are other properties you can use on the cube. You can check the ID, you can check the name, you can check the size, you can find out where the location of the queue. You can also um, uh, check the properties on the queue and metrics on the queue, look up the documentation of the table, definition of the table. And you can also, uh, I think there's also property to list the properties. Let me add this here. You can do queue.list list properties. Okay, you can list the properties. Uh, yeah, and if you want to delete a cube, you can call um, delete cube.delete method. So if you run this, right, I know the cube ID, this is the cube object I'm using. So if you call delete method and ask you for confirmation, I say yes, right, the cube will be deleted. Uh, if you call the delete method without a, uh, with the Boolean, true parameter and it will delete with, uh, without asking confirmation. All right, so let's check. If I close this, okay, refresh, this should be gone. Now the cube is gone, right? It's deleted. There's also another method called remove table and this doesn't work. Uh, I think there's a bug and we're going to fix this. It doesn't work. The remove table method, it doesn't work. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.